Japan's population is aging at a more rapid pace than that of any other country. Autonomous driving technology and home robotics are two promising solutions to this challenge. These technologies promise to provide people of all ages and physical capacity the ability to move around independently and freely. The latest AI technologies allow machines to learn from experiences, adjust and optimize their operations, and detect anomalies without any human intervention. We will make many of such machines talk to each other, exchange their experiences, so that they become more intelligent. These intelligent machines will certainly revolutionize the manufacturing industry. Cutting-edge medical technologies, including regenerating medicine, in which Japan is a world leader, critically rely on individual top-level doctors and researchers. This robot will observe and evaluate the changing state of an organism and determine the appropriate next move. This future robot with eyes and brains will exceed the boundaries of technology. Japan has a long tradition of excellence in the manufacturing industry. This is where we bring our strengths, IoT and artificial intelligence, to make revolutions in this core industrial sector. Advanced biotechnological therapies can be reproduced so that patients anywhere in the world can receive the treatment. Japan will break new ground for the future of humankind. Japan as a nation and society needs the technology the most and is the most prepared to adapt and embrace it. Japan now has the opportunity to lead this global technological shift and societal transformation. The Jasmine Outline, Google Part 2, whatever you want to refer to it as, here is what we have, and I want to present some of this. So this is something somewhat recent, and what I like about this is some of the key highlights. So uh, as we know, we're talking about decentralized framework, okay? Um, reasons for some of the things that were mentioned the other day. Some of you guys said, you know, hey, pay attention to... Uh, this trip from you know Elon Musk to Japan, all right? So been there, done that. We talked about that yesterday. What about this whole thing of a decentralized framework for collection and secure storage of Google Street View data case study? Now, you got to keep in mind, this is May 2023, and yes, this is Street View. You may be wondering where I'm going with this, but when I jump more into this, there's a lot of things referenced here that have to do with the Internet of Things. And obviously, if you've ever seen the whole thing of, a, you know, the guy driving around your neighborhood with the Google Street View thing, I mean, technically speaking, that is Internet of Things technology. There's even a picture that I've seen of Mike Hornwell, right, in Tecumseh, Oklahoma or something like that, where he literally sees the Google Street View guy drive over and he gives, he gives him a couple birds, you know, with his tongue sticking out. And he's all proud of it. And so, I mean, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, cause you could zoom in on them. True story. Maybe Mike won't share, will share with you. I don't know, but, um, it's good stuff, right? So check this out. Number one, I want you to pay attention to this right here. Um, I don't have it highlighted, but it, it's right above where it says decentralized 2023 IEEE IAS global conference on emerging technologies. Okay. Um, references, you know, this place in, you know, was it lower borough university in London, UK. Um, Timestamp May 19, 20 to the you know to 21st, 2023. Okay, we will show you why that's important when we get to that part of I triple E, but don't forget that you know, relax and take notes, Biggie Smalls, right? So, again, remember that decentralized framework for collection and secure storage of Google Street View data case study. Now, everything you see here is referenced towards the Internet of Things and. You do see the whole thing of on the far right, and I can't blow this part up, but Ethereum blockchain, okay? Now, this original reference, believe it or not, dates back to, as far as the picture goes, um, 
there's a few different ones, right? I think, you know, 2018, some other ones, right? But anyway, they have this thing where they reference the Ethereum blockchain, deployment of smart contracts, all this stuff, right? So bottom line is, is this a nothing burger? And I don't really think it is. Um, for one, the, the image that you're looking at, it says, you know, it, it plays a pivotal role in the current data-driven era. Um, applications such as computer vision, object recognition, facial identification. Come on, this is all the stuff we talk about when it comes with Jasmine, Internet of Things, Society 5.0, all that good stuff that we've been paying attention to for the longest, longest time. Now, here is where I want to draw your attention, and that is this. Google has proposed a framework that utilizes smart contract technology and open source robots to gather street view images sequences. Proposed framework also includes protocol for maintaining these sequences using private blockchain capable of what? Retaining different versions of street views while ensuring the integrity of what collected data. Do you know where I'm going with this? Have I caught your attention yet? Now, trust me, I have a lot. I stayed up like an extra three and a half hours last night and it was driving me crazy about this whole thing. And I was like, you know what? I think this is going to be solid. So I dug more deep into it and so on. Again, this is something that you guys know I do. And it was to the point where I was just like, man, I'm not going to get much sleep in the morning. And obviously maybe that's what gave me the migraine I had earlier. So um, it says with this framework, Google Maps data can be secured, collected, stored, and published on a private blockchain. By conducting tests with actual robots, we demonstrate the feasibility of the framework and its capability to seamlessly upload privately maintained blockchain images sequences to Google Maps using the Street View, Publish API, so on and so forth. Now, one thing you also want to take notes on this one, if you're the type of nerd who does this, is where it says cyber physical systems, but in particular, swarm robotics. Remember the key word of swarm. And also remember hyperledger fabric. Okay. So let those things resonate in your head. Or if you have it written down, write it down. It's important. Now, let's get into this. So on the right side, okay, it literally says word for word. Um, or actually, let me jump back to the left side. So this real quick, I'm highlighting it for you. The current centralized method is inefficient. Now, to keep on, this is Google. We know that they are all about data centralization, okay? They even recognize that, like it says, the current centralized method is inefficient. Yes, absolutely, inefficient. So it says, and it is unable to keep up with Google Street Views up to date. Therefore, we propose, and keep in mind the time of this, May, okay, May of this year. We propose a distributed and decentralized mechanism, all right, to collect Google Street Views with the help of robotic smart contracts, blockchain tech. In our framework, we propose an incentivized business model that can participate in Google Street View collection using open source robotics. Hmm. These incentive mechanisms have been proposed alongside the crowdsourcing models. Um, this shows how robotics and blockchain can be integrated together in various applications. Propo you know, they go down a little bit more. They propose a blockchain-based data collection model where contributors can earn incentives by... Sh yes, I just paused. Earn incentives. What have we been talking about for like, I don't know, eight months, nine months? Maybe more? I don't know. Even before me, have we not been talking about this stuff? Incentives. Data collection model. Contributors can't earn incentives. Huh. Interesting. By sharing the data peer-to-peer. -peer. Hmm. Interesting. Now, back to this part about swarm contracts, okay? All right. Suggest so using swarm contracts as a means of managing multi agent robots by providing incentives to agents participating in specific tasks. They further extend the concept to manage warehouse management, yada, yada, right? Apart from the distributed and decentralized data collection mechanism, we propose a secure image storing mechanism similar. In our method, we store the image data directly on a block. 
A blockchain-based image storage system can provide a highly secure and transparent way to store and manage image data. The advantages of using a blockchain-based image storage system include security, decentralization. Of course, there's a little bit more about this. Transparency, privacy, and data integrity. Now, one thing I want to talk about is a few days ago, and I'll try to pull this up. A few days ago, we had a special, and shout out to Mena Laguar and guys like um, Neo X Tricks and you know guys like that. Basically, yes, I'm using the Max Scratcher. Some of the new people pointed out that I, you know, when utility runs, I'll have a, a magic monkey that will scratch my back or something like that. Anyway, teaches them. But we did talk about some of the key highlights that they had, and just to draw your attention to it, um, I believe it was. Yes, um, I believe it was from the blockchain applications in finance. Not, not that one. It was Borks, Qualcomm. Yes, that's right. Snapdragon. Talk about why that is such a key thing. Let me share this tab instead. If you miss these videos, it's a good reference to talk about what we're talking about right now. That first original partner of Jasmine, Borks, is a big, big deal. Right. So you can always go back to that to give you a broader sense of where I'm going with all this right now for this uh, outline that we have. Right. So jumping back to this real quick, let me just jump back to this tab instead. Share a little bit more about this. Um, yes. It says these systems can particularly be useful in applications where image data security and integrity are critical, such as healthcare, finance, and government. The primary advantage of a blockchain-based image storage system is one that provides higher level of security. Right, no kidding. Let's jump a little bit further down. All right, let's see here. Um, it says, apart from the distributed and decentralized data collection mechanism, they propose a secure image storing mechanism similar to the one you saw in the other example. Um, let me see. I'm about to go further down. Sorry about that. I actually read that one again. I apologize. Um, says, for one, the proposed framework showed in figure one addresses the need for a secure and decentralized way to collect that street view data for, of course, Google Maps. Um, it talks about prior research on a smart contract based agent collaboration frameworks via blockchain tech. The private blockchain ensures the street view image sequences remain tamper proof and immutable. They also utilize the concept of forking. Let me jump down to that for a second. Um, yeah, forking to maintain independent image sequences on the blockchain. This ensures security, integrity, image data without the risk of alteration or deletion without network consensus. Hmm. We have talked about network consensus a few times over the course of many months. Uh, talks about, you know, to validate the framework, all these key things, right? Let's jump down a little bit more about this. The applications that require distributed processing and decentralization can adopt these technologies to implement more secure and transparent systems. Excuse me. According to present statistics, now listen to this, the Ethereum blockchain is the most widely used smart contract platform being used to execute smart contracts, right? We know that. Just because it's the most popular one, doesn't mean that the old technology is where we need to go, right? It says it acts like a distributed computer network that it provides you know, the infrastructure to execute secure code capable of handling complex business transactions automatically. It says in this paper, distributed and decentralized approach to autonomously collecting Google Street View using open source robots and protocol for securely storing the result, the resulting, excuse me, image sequences on a private blockchain was proposed. A private blockchain was utilized to maintain the integrity of the Google Street View images and to handle privacy issues stemming from storage image data publicly. The concept of forking was utilized to maintain independent Google Street. Let me go to this part. Uh, man, let's go further up. I guess chopped off on that part. But anyway, my point is you can understand all like what we're trying to do here. All right. And of course, that's not it. 
All right. There's some sources here that we want to talk about. I triple E. But nonetheless, I wanted to bring it to your attention. Now, check this out. And hopefully I'm on the right one. I'm just going to double check some settings real quick. Uh, make sure that we have it up on the screen for you. We do. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take it to the next part. And we did talk about um, specifically hyperleisure. Okay. So what's unique here is this, right? On that previous uh, proposed paper from obviously a per particular person for, from Google who wrote that up as of May, okay, um, referenced a few things, right? And if, if anything, I think it dates back to like 2018 and so on. So number one, check this out. Let's just say number two. I don't know. I don't even know where I'm at. Hyperleisure fabric on multiple hosts using Docker Swarm and Compose. And we talked about Swarm earlier, okay? So again, reference what was mentioned in Google. Reference what's also mentioned here with Hyperleisure, okay? So Swarm. So anyway, this right here states, back in 2018, update, to deploy Hyperleisure fabric on Kubernetes, refer to my article, deploying Hyperledger fabric, right? But it states here, Deploying Hyperledger Fabric on multiple hosts involves multiple steps. And you got to keep in mind, we are talking about these devices of Google Street View. Literally, what was referenced earlier was technically, if you think about it, multiple hosts because of all these different devices. Am I too far off with this so far? I think you are with me with this. You get where I'm coming from, but we're going to get more into this. So for one, it states that using Docker Swarm to connect multiple containers on different hosts is one of the possible options. It goes on more about Hyperledger. I'm not going to try to nerd it out completely with the technical technicalities of all this. Um, but it, it, it goes to mention all these things referenced into Hyperledger in this concept of Swarm. And again, back to that original one, talking more about what? Swarm. Um, I'm going to get more into this in just a second. Talks about the deployment of your first network, right? I can get into all that stuff. Hold on. But nonetheless, I mean, if you are to near it out, you can look way more into the concept of Swarm. And, you know, talks about creating an overlay network, right? Um, talks about those multiple hosts. I mean, again, it's just, it's really, I guess you could say, um, you know, worth noting okay all right getting more into this why is max bringing this to your attention all right so for one i'm gonna bring you to this site it's called mybroadband.co and basically speaking is this okay because you did hear and we showed you guys in the intro was back when uh the late great shinzo abe was alive he talked about specifically when he brought this proposal right stating that we want to bring um or fund a bunch of startups this was like many years ago i think it was like roughly 2015 2016 something like that okay and um you know one thing i'll also show you guys proof here towards the end jasmine uh started you know originally in 2016 didn't get to launch their you know blockchain service until 2021 but the timing of all this. So like it says, Google has partnered with a number of distributed ledger technology startups <clears throat> to bring blockchain tech to its cloud platform. Again, this is many years ago, but the time frame matches up. Um, it says the company announced in a blog post that it has partnered with digital assets and block apps to integrate blockchain solutions to its cloud services. Again, I also want to point out that you're also seeing some modern articles and we're going to tie all that in together too but it says google said that customers will be able to test open source integrations for what hyperledger fabric and ethereum layer this year through his google cloud product marketplace interest um it goes on to also mention digital assets stated that in this partnership with google cloud they will allow developers to access a comprehensive list or set are tools to build blockchain apps on demand. Uh, they're delighted, of course, to innovate with digital asset in the distributed ledger space. Uh, DLT, of course, has great potential to benefits, you know, financial services, not just financial services, but industry. 
across many different industries. They're excited to bring these developer tools, of course, to Google Cloud. <clears throat> now, I'm not gonna just leave you with just that. Back to what I was talking about earlier. Jasmine, right? Like it says here, is a company that founded in 2016. According to its website by Kazuma Sasato, former CEO of SonyStyle.com, Jasmine says its team consists of what? Experienced members such as professionals of electronics. This part I really want you to remember. Mechanics. Remember that. Please, for this outline. Mechanics, telecommunications, devices, system integrations, and designs. Now, let's take you finally to the IEEE website. As you can see here, it says it's the advancing technology for humanity. Their site literally says the professional home for the engineering and technology community worldwide. Uh, let me accept that real quick. Advancing technology for humanity. Again, back to the original first thing that we brought you to you tonight in regards to the information of this deep dive. IEEE and its members inspire global community through highly cited publications. Okay, that's why it was cited there conferences, technology standards, and professional and educational activities. And you also got to keep in mind, you know, we talk about, for instance, Gilbert Verdian, Quant Network, ISO TC 307, Gilbert Verdian created the Quant Network standard through ISO TC 307. The inception 2015 went live into effect in 2016. I've also seen with writing back in a long time ago, um, that Kuna Takiyando was talking about creating technology standards as well, right? So how does this all come together and how do you make more sense about it? Well, we're going to get into all that. So for one, you know, they, they're all active all over the place. They're, you know, trying to get involved with the whole thing with Hawaii. That's a horrible thing that happened, by the way. Um, but they got all this information about um how they're like the world's largest most comprehensive technical conference um and how they contribute to just that you know advancing tech for humanity now that is significant right we're always referencing different technology companies and what's involved with that especially when it comes to engineering now back to this guy on a somewhat previous deep dive we talked about tadashi marita now, if you don't know who he is and you didn't see that video, it's okay. You can go back to it, right? But I would advise doing some catch up because it is important to know who this guy is and why he is a guy who matters. <clears throat> so for one, he's the chief security officer, CSO, and senior strategist. In 1971, he joined Sony Corporation. Uh, he has since contributed, and look at this, as an engineer and has developed several technologies. He has applied for about 100 patents. We've shown you that. Men and Lugawar also referenced some of those patents, right, from Justify, I think it was, uh, over there in Japan. And he did all this while working for Sony. Um, it also states that the invention of NSC technology and its what? Read this part, standardization. So, again, these guys know all about standards are one of his accomplishments. From 2007 to 2013, he was appointed as chief distinguished what? Engineer. And was instructed to investigate security trends and made recommendations to Sony's top management every year. You know, it behooves me when I see people say that Jasmine is a scam, right? I know sometimes people get tired of hearing that, but it absolutely does. I think it's nuts because it dismisses all these key players that have contributed to what? An advancement of technology through humanitarian efforts and this society that they're trying to create, Society 5.0. Look at this. Since 2013, he joined the OES project of Sony Computer Science Laboratory, invented DC microgrid technology, which of course Menno Lagor pointed out, and installed at Okinawa Institute of Science, you know, and Technology Graduate University as a trial of world first DC microgrid system. My goodness. 
you know, the other day we showed you that example. I mean, it's not microgrid, but semiconductors of how, you know, that there was this particular company and it was a, you know, semiconductor company and dating back to like 2012, it just didn't do much. And then all of a sudden recently, the thing things up like what, over 12,000%. And it's just like if something like that can go parabolic, what about some of these ones that are tied into distributed ledger technology and so on? You know where we're going with that. And if you haven't seen that, that isn't chopped up yet. It will be, but that'll be for the quant segment. He participated in the 2008 JST uh, Crest Dios project. He supported the development of international what standards. See, this is why I always reference other articles and especially that google article because it specifically mentions standards for open system dependability and contributed to the development of iec 62853 and of course i don't know what that is i might have to look more into that some other day maybe somebody like madame loguar gets into that hint hint right wink wink if you're watching since 2020 he has been appointed as a project researcher at Kanagawa University and is promoting research that contributes to the dissemination of standards. So guys, my point is this, checkmark standards, checkmark, you know, engineering, checkmark all the way across the board, a little bit more. So again, back to Menelaguar, he, you know, states basically, again, back to, you know, T. Marita, one of the inventors, of course, of Felica, we did that deep dive, inventor of DC microgrid tech. We talked about that. Um, and then, of course, again, back to some of these patents. And just in case you missed it yesterday, I'm not going to highlight them all, but this particular one is definitely interesting. So for one, filed back in 2012, publication date also 2012, applicant, Sony Corporation. Is there more than one inventor? No, there's not. Who is the sole inventor? It is Tadashi Morita. What, what are we talking about? Well, it's information processing apparatus. Hmm, that is interesting. Think about it. If you are that Google Maps, you know, Internet of Things device, right? Once you need an information processing apparatus, a program and execution method and computer program, I will read this part and it's a lot. An information processing apparatus includes a program executing unit which interprets and executes codes of a computer program created in a procedural language in an environment with a tamper-resistant performance, wherein a security attribute and an authentication key are provided in units of functions in the computer program executed by a program executing unit. And wherein program executing unit executes authentication processing with the authentication key for executing the function, which makes it possible to execute the function based on the security attribute. Again, who is this guy part of? He's part of Sony Corporation, and he also works for Jasmine. You want to talk about a key great player that maybe just didn't get a lot of recognition from a lot of other content creators and so on. We put so much focus on Kunitaki and Kasa Masasato and Harasan, right? But I'm telling you, when we talk about talent and people with skills, Jasmine has a collection of a lot of key people that are going to contribute to Society 5.0. But you better believe the likes of Google know what Society 5.0 is. And you better believe they are all about being opportunist and seizing opportunity, especially when reports come out that for Twitter, Japan is their second largest market. Now, I didn't take the time to look more into where does Google rank with Japan as far as our market, but I'm sure it is way up there, but maybe it's not. And if it's not, maybe they recognize that because due to Google being a centralized entity in Japan, getting away from centralized entities and going more towards decentralized entities, right? Or indexing or whatever you want to call it, okay? Do you follow where I'm going with that? What kind of value is there in that? All right, a little bit more of what we have. Let's take you back to Bajit. We talked about Bajit yesterday. Mechanical engineering. Notice how I'm tying all this together? Straight from Bajit, and we know that Bajit is a key 
I don't know, you could say sponsor, partner, whatever you want to call it. When it comes to Jasmine, you have Kazuma Sato is, uh, you know, one of the executives over there at Bajit, also with Jasmine. An honorable chairman also is Kunitaki Ando. Also, Bajit has that partnership that we pointed out many times, but especially yesterday with uh, Google, right? And that's a real thing. But what about this whole thing of mechanical engineering? We were talking about, member T. Merida, okay? So for one, if you're wondering about the services specifically from Bajit, it goes on to mention that they offer a wide range of mechanical engineering. And make sure that I'm on the right page for you guys. I think I am. Yes, we are. So it goes on to mention engineering solutions. Uh, they include PLM, CAD. I know about CAD, right? A lot of firefighters use CAD. Um, product development. I should say firefighters, but, you know, the fire department, right? Had a friend that, you know, did that type of work. They develop and deliver the best, not just like, you know, one of the best. It says the best quality engineering solutions and integrated systems that meet our clients' needs and requirements. That's a bold statement. Uh, for some of you guys, you're going to say, well, of course they're going to say that, right? What company is not going to claim to be the best, but what if they are actually the best? And you may be saying, well, how is that so? By creating standards, right? If you literally have some guys that sit on your board of engine, you know, mechanical engineering that literally created standards, isn't that a big deal? You know, you have Marita who has literally created, you know, patents. You even have Kazumasa Sato who's created patents. These guys are literally inventors. So I, I would imagine, yeah, uh, this might very well be the best. Going more down into it, why choose Bajit for mechanical design? Or how about this? Why should Google pick Bajit for mechanical design, right? Because they provide mechanical engineering services to global clients, not just in Japan. Using CAD software to support all special design sectors like 3D modeling, drafting, product design, machine design, electronical design, architectural design, floor layout, blueprint, Visual effects, Bajit offers clients that are tailored to their demands and business objectives. They don't get intimidated from what I've seen because, oh, this is Google. My God, we're going to have to scramble and figure something out. It doesn't seem like it's the case. If anything, they would just tap who on the shoulder? Mr. Marita. And he'd get his team together, right? Where's some of the solutions? Well, there's a lot of solutions. But look at what it is shown here. A lot of similar type of photos reference even back to what? The Google first page that we showed it, right? Machine design, product design, sheet metal, electronic components. Electronical components, excuse me. What do they offer? Well, a bunch of things. Product lifecycle management, 3D modeling, manufacturing drafting, plant layout, simulation, Benefits of mechanical engineering. They have NDAs. Funny how they also mention that. Some people who are new to crypto, they don't understand the concepts of NDAs. Max, you don't understand the concept of NDAs. Look what happened to the last channel. Yeah, okay. True. That's a good point. <laughs> I do understand it. Never again, though, right? Maintain global quality of design standard. Yes. Provide support, urgent requests. Deliver on time with satisfaction, transparency, you name it. But this part. Engineering services workflow at Bajit. Again, <clears throat> if you've been on Bajit from the time of now compared to a few months ago, they completely revamped their website. Why is that? Well, maybe they want to be taken a little bit more serious. There was criticism about their site. Bajit Engineering Services focuses on identifying and offering the most effective methods to enable product innovation throughout the whole product lifestyle management by utilizing the core competencies in mechanical embedded electronical electric electrical excuse me and software systems software systems hmm. that's interesting they have this whole thing about engineering design data management application management so it's all there right basically all there they have tools that are already in place right and you see some of these some of these you might be familiar with some of them that you may not know anything about and that's okay but the point is, it's all there for your reference. Now, we got to get into a little bit more of the juiciness. So check this out. 
<clears throat> this is from NASDAQ. Data democratization challenges. You better believe there's some challenges that have to get met, right, before we see, I don't know, maybe an official statement, you know. And again, I don't, I'm not saying I have proof here, but it does make you wonder. So for one, what are some of these challenges? Well, like it says, there's good people um, that process in the process, and it says technological reasons why many organizations have yet to fully democratize access to their data. Including what? Organizational silos. You can even throw in a quant reference with that one. In some businesses, teams are set up to work independently. They don't share internal or external data they collect to make decisions. And there isn't a strong culture of sharing insights cross-functionally. Huh. Again, back to quant. And I'm not going to talk your ear off on that. We already established that before. You go back, watch that if you choose to do so. Maybe I pull it over to this channel, right? It's just a point of reference. Reliance on specialists. Many organizations have long relied on data scientists, scientists, analysts, and other experts to interpret data. Some of these teams have become so inundated with requests, decision makers have developed workarounds or have stopped seeking data as part of their process together. Changing these ingrained cultural paths can require a complete overhaul of the business process a significant challenge absolutely let's get further down into this this next part people are curious because we were talking about inventors we're talking about marita right so yes people are curious and they think in terms of questions this is what made the invention of the web browser and google search bar so revolutionary in the democratization of the internet the democratization of the internet but at the end of the day, you are now, I should say now, but they have been, as a Google, centralizing that data, right? Can Google get to the point where they decentralize data? I mean, if it's kind of like the whole the whole saying goes, yeah, you're you know, democratize you're creating a form of democratizing the internet, but what are you taking with the data? You're, you know, you're taking that data and you're centralizing it on a centralized marketplace. How can they? get with industry leaders to you know embrace the future i think you know like we're talking about with what jasmine has to offer i think that's a legitimate statement i think you know where we're going with this you know where we're going with this so internet users could search for web pages we know about that right data analytics needs a similar search focused tool to power true democratization now, there's three steps in order for this all to come together and to happen. And that's why I'm going to bring it to you. The ease to use data democratization tool of the future. And again, remember this part of the future, not talking about now of the future will combine the power of big data and AI. Hmm. I mean, again, it, it all leads back to Jasmine. I'm just being honest. And, of course, with interoperability with other solutions, such as what Quant Network can, can provide, right? We've already talked about that. But with the usability of Google to deliver data stories and insights in response to direct questions from individual users, yada, yada, organizations can begin the shift. Think about this, the shift. We're always talking about, you know, the great reset and all that stuff or, the, you know, flip with a Swift or, or flip with a Swift. I, I, I bet Swift would love that saying flip of the switch, right? To true data democratization by following three steps toward overcoming current technological barriers. Number one, build a strong data foundation that includes a wide range of internal and external data sources that cover the entire relevant market. Hmm. Wonder where we're going with that. Not just a single brand or product, right? Internet of things all the way. IOT. Right, you know how we tie things in. Continuously update data feeds and ensure that all information is always relevant and reveal shifts in the market landscape and time for leaders to execute responsive decisions. Number two, use advanced analytics to make data insights understandable. For example, today, like it says, powerful machine learning (ML) and natural language processing (NLP) algorithms can extract context from data by creating simplified representations of text and applying macros or rules to those representations to determine semantics. From there, NLP can identify the sentiment behind a data point and pair it with taxonomy, 
I'm not pronouncing that right. Taxonomy. I can't pronounce that tonight. Sorry. Values or details. But again, the pairings. Remember, we talked about earlier with Hyperledger, with Swarm. Talked about multiple devices. Boom. Another perfect example. That's why I tie it all in for it. How about this part? You, you know, to get to the point of unique specific market, this makes it possible to drill down into, say, consumer opinions of a particular skincare ingredient, recent patent filings for product packaging. Who were part of all these patent filings and so on to get this job done for IoT? Again, a lot of members of the Jasmine and Sony team. Marita, Kazumasa Sato. Are we not paying attention to some of this stuff yet? So there's a lot, right? But number three, this is this is key. Scale the insights within a user-friendly experience. The future of democratized data will follow Google's path. Now, as far as the original path, but not the path as far as centralizing data, obviously. How so? With tools that allow individuals across businesses to access easy-to-understand data-driven stories that answer questions and solve problems. The key is for these tools to be responsive to individual user needs that's what's missing from today's data visualizations and dashboards and it's what made internet searching such a game changer very very true but how does google go about you know embracing other markets other industries for decentralization of what data so we're going to jump into that in close to the closing part of what we have for you tonight in regards to Jasmine and Google. So for one, it states here, back a while ago in a blog post, Google CEO Sundar Pichai, excuse me, making sure I'm not muted, said that the company will invest, listen to this, okay, this is big. 730 million in local infrastructure through 2024. But Chai added that he met Prime Minister Fumio Kishida to share what? Japan's digitalization initiative plan. Interesting. So am I really connecting the dots here? Are you still with me? Do you feel like it's a nothing burger? Or do you think it's something that could potentially be solid? I'm just looking at it from the perspective of understanding like Jasmine is the first to be regulatory compliant in this country, Japan. They cross all the T's. They dot all the I's in that regard. From a retail person's perspective, they don't like the idea that there's not enough being said and so on. But again, if you've been invested in things like XDC, then this shouldn't be out of the norm for you. You should know at this point that when there's projects that don't talk a lot or don't come out with a lot of press, even quant could be a good example, that they're building in the background. And then is that such a bad thing? No. Now look at this. Again, back to the part about Japan digitalization, this plan. It includes infrastructure investments, digital training programs for companies and individuals, and Google.org grants for different foundations. Now again, go back and we'll do this right now. All right, I'm just going to do a control F to kind of help me out with this. Yes, let's take it, take it back to Justia. Shout out to Men and Laguar. I've also referenced Justia, you know. Look at this, okay? Even dating back to 1990, Tadashi Morita, right, has taken advantage of what? Grants. Can you give me, Max, can you give me another example? Yes, I can. Even back to 1992, took advantage of a grant. Is he listed here? Yes, he is. Boom, he's listed right there. Can you give me another example, Max? Well, I can give you countless examples. Could you give me something, Max, a little bit more recent? Absolutely. How about this one? And this one's exclusive to Tadashi Morita, the signee, Sony Corporation. What particular date? 2016, a little bit more recent. Type grant, you see it right there. And it was for what? Something that we talked about earlier. Information processing apparatus, information processing method and computer program. It's got a patent number, you can get more into it. Talks about creating backup in a format in which the variable definition and function 
definition in the code being more executed on the program, right? You know, if you want to nerd it out. But the point is, time and time again, you see members of the Jasmine team take advantage of grants. Now, back to the whole part of Google. Again, digital training programs. I know I read this before, but I want to pound it home again. Digital training programs for companies and individuals and Google org grants for different foundations. Okay, now let's get into this. Earlier this year, Google has announced the Topaz Subseat Cable Project that connects Canada and Japan. Analysis uh, Mason study about the company's infrastructure investments in the country published last month noted it could lead to an additional, listen to this guys, 303 billion in GDP, gross domestic product, between 2022 and 2026. This announcement comes days after Google announced its first cloud region in Africa, based out of South Africa. The company said it's also building cloud interconnect sites in Nairobi, um, Lagos, or Lagos, I forgot how to pronounce it, Nigeria. We did do a piece about that. I think it was on Quant a while back. I can't remember that, but I remember talking specifically about that in Nigeria. Um, it goes down to also mention uh, this is to connect the on-premise networks to Google's infrastructure. The company announced new cloud regions in Malaysia. So my point is, Google is is not just focused on Japan. This is this is taken all over the place, right? So I mean, this is big stuff. All right. In closing, I want to show you guys this: a new set of big data tools, spurred by the release of academic papers, like again we were referencing earlier at the very very beginning, describing Google's internal technology, gave data engineering experts again think about Marita, the ability to collect and store this new data making it available to expert users who could generate insights. Organizations built early data lakes, and with the grains from Salser's BI fresh in their minds, expected rapid value generation. Rapid value generation. Again, I can't pound it home enough. If you understand utility in motion compared to, oh, the market's dead, and this isn't moving. Okay, you bought into the concept of a utility token, right? We understand that, Jasmine's going to this layer two Jasmine chain. Give it a chance. Wait for full implementation. What is so wrong about buying and holding nowadays? You know, I'm not into cryptocurrency for day trading. I'm just being honest. I'm just not. Some of you guys do that. Hey, great. If, you, if you're great at it, do you, right? None of this is financial advice. But for me, I have always been the type of guy that's buy and hold. You know, proof in the pudding back in 2021. Buy and hold, hey, that worked out great for me. For some of you guys, that's worked out great for you. So my key thing is I want to just re read a few more things, and that is this part where it says, clearly in the new world of big and unstructured data, insights wouldn't come just from making data available and democratizing its access. It says democratization of insights, which is what really matters, had to come by expanding, and think about this, expanding or going worldwide, right? The capabilities of familiar tooling. Technology had to meet users where they were, not vice versa. That's where Google Cloud went to work. And like it says, empowers empowering users to you know generate insights by learn or leaning into these tools and skills they already have. And we did talk about obviously the first steps and so on. So my key thing and you know takeaway from all of this is I think that there is something here, and we'll not obviously know about it due to NDAs and all sorts of things like that, basically. But you know, the key thing for you should be the research. You know, do you feel as though that? When you look at everything that was presented, Hyperledger, the concept of Swarm that was mentioned, um, going back to that paper of that reference of what Google is trying to, you know, switch to, embrace, you know, they they have underlying infrastructure, but they're trying to expand on the infrastructure. They literally reference blockchain. They literally reference Hyperledger. They literally reference all these things are tied into data, Internet of Things. You saw the whole outline of, you know, them going to Japan and, and talks with Japan and recognizing what the prime minister, um, you know, was ta was talking about in regards to the, these uh, proposals and so on. Uh, Marita with, you know, his engineering background, again, the standards, embracing grants of the past, creating, you know, patents and so on. So is that a, a legitimate way of looking at things or is it just 
hey, man, I got my blinders on. I just want to read mainstream news. That's all I care about. Forget all the deep dive nonsense research that you presented, Max. I'm all about I want to see when moon and I want to see when moon now. Well, I hate to disappoint you. It doesn't exactly work that way. If you understand utility in motion, it's just that the actual utility being in motion. It takes time for things to be developed. It takes time for partnerships to come together and it also takes time for us to get the verifications of what was said in private in regards to a non-disclosure agreement and so on. I think you start seeing things come out as time comes, you know, or passes by, but and it's not going to happen today. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in regards to what was presented today. I know that was quite the deep dive, and if anything, I am finally going to jump back into the comments. <music>